we have. So we are having three rods, which are made of different materials, steel, aluminum, and bronze. They are connected together to form a composite member. And here, loads have been applied at different position, having different magnitude and also the direction. So 2P is applied here, P is applied at this point, and 4P is applied at this point. So now we need to calculate the value of P such that the stress in each material should not exceed the value mentioned. That is in steel, it should not be greater than 140 megapascal, 90 megapascal in aluminum, and 100 megapascal in bronze. We are asked to calculate the maximum value of P that we can apply in this system. So when we have such a system, the first thing what we need to check is, we need to get the amount of force in each segment. Okay. So you can see here, there is a net force of 2P to the left, 4P to the left, and P to the right. So we can see here, there is a total of 6P, okay, 6P towards left, and there is 1p towards right. So we can see the net force is 5p towards left. There's a net force that is acting on this particular system. And as this system is in equilibrium, a reaction will be developed at this support to oppose this active force. So we are going to get a reaction of 5p here because of the given loading. Now to analyze this, we need to consider each part separately. So first I'm going to consider the bronze, the bronze part. So if I'm looking to the bronze part, what, what I have is a small portion like this, which is subjected to a loading of 2P on the right. And what happens on the left side? Okay, when I consider here, what is the net force that is applied on this bronze member from the left? So if I look, I'm going to calculate the value. You can see here, there is 5P acting towards right. Then there is 4P acting towards left, which means 5P minus 4P, because I have considered the forces to the right as positive here. So 5P minus 4P, and there is another P, which is also acting at this point to the right. So plus P. So I can see that the net value is 5 minus 4, which is 1, plus 1, that is 2P. Okay. So this bronze part is experiencing a loading of 2P from the right and 2P from the left. So we can write the stress in bronze. I'm writing it as ZB or sigma P equal to PP <coughs> by AB, right? load in the bronze divided by area of bronze. So the load is 2p that we got from this particular figure and we need to find the area. So diameter, uh, the area is directly given it is 200 mm square. Okay, And it is said that the stress in bronze should not exceed the value 100 which means I can equate this to 100 and from this I'll be getting the value of P as this 2, 2 get cancelled, so 100. So what I'm going to get is a value 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay. That is going to be the value of P. Okay. If I'm considering this bronze part. Now I'm going to check the next one, which is my, which is the aluminium. I'm taking the aluminium. So aluminium is also a part like this. And now I'm going to apply the forces on the right and left. So on the right side, there is a 2P acting to the left, P acting to the right. So net force is P to the left. So it's going to be P to the left. What about the right hand side? 5P to the right, 4P to the left. So net force is P to the right. So this particular component is subjected to P force. Now let's calculate the stress. Sigma aluminium is equal to P aluminium by A aluminium. Ok. 
Okay, so we already have the value of P force, which is P itself, and the area is given as 400. So we can consider the value as 400. And it is said in the problem that the maximum stress possible in aluminium is 90. So we can write it as 90. So from here, we'll be getting the value of P as 90 times 400. That is basically 36000 Newton. Okay, so that's the value of P considering the portion aluminium. Now I'm going to consider the part steel. So I'm going to consider the part steel. So again, I'm plotting the steel part and I'm looking to the left side. In the left, what I'm having is 5P. So I mark that. What about the right hand side? How much force is there? 2P to the left, 6P to the left. So totally, uh, sorry, 2P and 4P to the left, 6P to the left. I will write it here so that it will be easy. 4P to the left. 2p to the left and a p to the right hence it is minus so i'm going to get the net value as 5p to the left so this is also a member which is subjected to 5p from the right 5p from the left so i can write sigma steel is equal to p steel divided by a steel okay so 5p by area area is given as 500 okay 500 and the maximum possible stress in steel is given as 140 it shouldn't be exceeding 140 so i can write it as 140 from which i'll be getting the value of p as p is going to be 14000 newton so that's the value I'm getting. Now I need to analyze. Okay. So if I'm considering the bronze part, the value of P is 10,000 Newton. From aluminum, I can have the value of P as 36,000 Newton. And from steel, the value can be 14,000 Newton. Okay. If a value of P is 36,000, the stresses in aluminium is within the specified limit. If the value is 14,000, the value of P is 14,000, then steel is fine. And bronze will be fine if, fine if the value of P is 10,000. Okay, so if I apply any value greater than 10,000 Newton as P, this bronze part will fail because bronze cannot take that much tension. The maximum stress is specified as 100 in the problem. So seeing these three values, we need to take the minimum value because any value greater than 10 is going to make the bronze fail. Any value greater than 14 is going to make the steel part fail. Any value greater than 36,000 for P is going to make the aluminium fail. So we need to apply the value of P such that all these components will be safe. Hence. The final answer, which is the safe load that we can apply as P is this particular value, which is the least value among the three, which is 10,000 Newton.